Hey everybody, um, if you're watching this, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you've already subscribed and been supporting the channel, I just want to say thank you. Um, <laughs> so I'm back for another review of Love During Lockup, Love After Lockup, whatever we're calling it. Season 5, episode 25, Cut the Cameras. I'm annoyed with these people, but that's also how I know the season is given. So I'm just, I'm going to start with that new couple, Rick and Samantha, because this is going to be short. And honestly, we could have done without her in the halfway house, but nevertheless. So they're a new couple. Rick is 58. She's 56. They're too damn old to be fucking with each other on this fuck shit. Like, I just, I can't. <laughs> I can't. So if you're in jail at 56 in a halfway house or some shit, I ain't got nothing for you. Uh, and you weren't sentenced earlier in your life. Or you weren't out protesting um, in the name of freeing Palestine or Black Lives Matter. I don't have shit for you. Damn sure not if you're no white woman. Because you ain't got no business in jail unless you done really, really fucked up. Okay, we know it is not the same for black women. Nevertheless, you ain't in jail for no moral cause. And I, I can't or halfway, whatever the fuck it is. Anyway. They reconnected after 35 years. Is it just me or do white people have a real deep association with high school? In a way, like even all their TV shows, their dramas, even after they're adults, well into their adult, they go back to high school. Like I don't go back to high school like that. It's just development. That to me is like going back to elementary school in a way that I just don't understand. Anyway, so he has his nieces helping him find clothes and stuff. I guess to look better for a chick that can't get her drinking together uh, okay and you know i'm not judging nobody for that but you you get it so he doesn't have children so his nieces are very close to him he sees them as nosy um but you're making wild ass mistakes at 58 years old i think they have a reason to be concerned you're the fun uncle bruh that's why they love you and they're looking out for you because i'm sure they could probably do a lot of shit with you that they couldn't do with their parents considering the way you were living your life nevertheless She's basically, Samantha's basically at a halfway house or re-entry center or whatever we're calling it. They're reconnecting from high school. They've been dating for like three months. And he's talking about marrying this chick. I can't. Um, so they're worried about her having the influence on him because apparently he had some drinking issues. Um, they're afraid for him to marry her. We could have done without this couple. He's not giving the teeny and Rob, Jamal and Ayana kind of drama. Moving on. Joey and Michael. Okay, we back at it again. Okay, so he's talking about how he came out about his relapse. And I'm like, well, you kind of came out about your relapse. Your sister really brought it to the table. But nevertheless, it's out there. He said his family is upset. And, and rightfully so. I mean, he said he didn't tell them because he didn't want them to be disappointed. And I, I can understand that too. But they're disappointed because they love you and they seem like they want to be there for you. All right, so he calls um joey calls michael and he asked him how he felt about the parent meeting the parents and the family the night before if i was his parents i'd be pissed off because joey's been living with them for 10 years and then he bring all them fucking we tv cameras and producers telling people to talk not to talk and shit i'd be pissed that's just a side note anyway so michael asked him why he told his family uh about the relapse and he said he would have never done that and i'm like <laughs> i want to go michael and Baby, you don't connect that to your situation now. Maybe if you would have told somebody something, you'd be better off. Anyway, so Michael asked him, you know, um, it doesn't seem like Michael has as close of a relationship with his family. So maybe for him, it's not a big deal, but it is to Joey. So we are literally watching Michael get the effects of fucking pepper spray in jail from a big fight that had just happened before that he told us about. And he literally shows us the man who's going back there. Or, I mean, we see two police officers walking. I can't really see, but you, you get the point. Um, one person away. They're walking a person away in handcuffs. What the fuck? And that's the kind of fuck shit I'm talking about with the police. Okay? And, and the fact that they are pepper spraying people after a fucking fight. What the fuck did you need to do that shit for? And, and while I'm on it, and I don't give a fuck with nobody thinks. If you disagree, you can go on about your business because I'm going to stand on this. Free Palestine. Y'all colonized those people's land in 19-fucking-48. And the students who are protesting have every fucking right to do so. Those protests have not gotten violent until the police showed up and until people started responding 
to the way in which their peaceful encampments across their college campuses have been going down. Not to mention of many thousands of people that have been out in the streets. What they're doing is wrong. Even if you take yourself out of it for a second, regardless of how you feel about Jewish people having an Israeli state, even though that was only created in 1948, to give them a space after Hitler had carried out the Holocaust. If anybody should have given up their land, it should have been Britain who made that decision or Germany who committed the sin, not the people of Palestine. Okay, so I want y'all to know that these people aren't angry over nothing. They've been fighting for their land and this is colonization and the effects. And those people have every right to be angry and fight to defend themselves. It's only news when they seem to react. And what they're doing is wrong. And even if you take yourself out of it, does it really look like with over 34,000 people and about, what, 215, 216 days now since October 7th, does it really look like Israel needs help? That we need to be sending 90 plus billion dollars, which seems like every quarter now, to them? Do they look like they need help? We are actively funding a genocide. Now, how did I get on that? Oh, yeah, people, the police fucking with people who stand on the right side of right. Pro-Israeli people who started the shit, tearing up people's encampments, throwing sticks at them on these college campuses. I want to say UCLA or Columbia or both, but I think it was UCLA. And I'm just sitting up here like, get the fuck out of here. So I say this, what the fuck you need to pepper spray everybody for? You already got one of the people in handcuffs. Anyway, so he asked him for his release date. He can only find out a possible date in three months. When he can actually find out about it from the court or the judge or whomever. Joey says, oh, just three months? Like, it's no big deal. I'm like, three fucking months is a long time. So he said Michael is not giving him a straight answer about when he gets out. He said he thinks he's not telling him because he's afraid he will leave him. And Joey was like, and possibly I will. Michael tells WeTV in a separate interview over the phone, whatever the fuck it was doing, that he could be in for six years. I said... <laughs> Michael, sir, six months and six years are not even close. Okay, so I, I can't give you nothing. And no Tino Shade, but Michael is gay and is having more sex than Joey is outside of prison. Okay, he wants Joey to keep his money on the books. I knew when he was willing to have Joey doctor a photo for him and risk his entry into jail that he didn't give a fuck. Okay, okay. So let's see, we got, um, okay, let's do Teeny and Rob. So Teeny, 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 I tried with you these first two episodes because your situation is crazy and it's one that I really think you could avoid, but nevertheless, um, she was going to walk out from Rob's mama, who honestly is the root of this tree of several problems because you can tell a mama who act like that ain't raised her children right. Just saying. And we can see the clear difference between her and Ayana's mother. I don't want to hear nobody's sob story. And I'm not saying that people don't have them. But the way people... We all play the cards we're dealt. Okay? And some of us do it better than others. So, the mama starts telling her, Oh, no. Wh where you going, Tini? We need to talk. We need to talk. Bitch, you knew that when she sat down. You did that shit to get under her skin. And you got under it. And you hurt her fucking feelings bringing up her, uh, his ex. You didn't have to do all of that. Now, it does seem like, and I thought this even before Rob said anything. It does seem like, because I was like, well, Teeny reconnected with him in prison. What the fuck is the big deal? And I, you know what I mean? Like, it ain't like they was out in the street fighting like Ayana and her best friend. But it did make me think, okay, well, was she seeing him when he was with somebody? And that's why she it gets under her skin. Turns out that's kind of it. All right. Kind of. Not exactly, but enough. So she wanted her to sit down and talk because she is really wanting to get her money. That's really what this shit is about. That bitch ain't fooled me. So Teeny is the one who says, I go to visit him every week. Me and my kids go to visit him every week, weekend or whatever, eating out the vending machine. She was like, I'm the one who started a petition to get him out of jail for an excessive sentence. And I was like, Teeny has done more than her part. She said it only got 3,000 signatures, but she tried. 3,000 is a lot, especially for a petition for one person. So I know she did her part. And honestly, when we got this first episode, I was like, that's really a long time for robbery. And, you know, every I'm not sitting up here saying that I'm sure people weren't hurt or whatever. But at the point in which 
he's now like what 34 like i just feel like he got an adult sentence with something he fucked up with as a kid he shouldn't have been in jail at long honestly he shouldn't okay um so i don't give a fuck about her mother's background being bad you do the best you can and you fucking figure it out. Teeny's two kids, and this is my problem because Teeny's talking about all the shit she's done. Teeny, Teeny, you don't have to take your kids up there every weekend. That's not their fucking father. Why can't you leave your kids with a babysitter, a friend, Roxanne, whatever your homegirl's name was that was sitting on the bed, or a grandmama, or a friend, or something like that? Them kids do not need to be going to a prison every fucking weekend. Because my heart, I really felt for that little girl when she was like, I can't wait till he gets home so I can do regular stuff with my friends every fucking weekend. Don't no 13, 12, 13 year old girl or no little boy, 8, 9, 10 years old needs to be at a fucking prison every fucking weekend. You fucking up for no reason because this ain't these kids daddy. Anyway, so she was talking about, Teeny was talking about, well, I had it rough too as a single mom. Um, her daughter's father died when, uh, her daughter was only like one and she said the father of the boy is just non-existent. And honestly, she does seem to have nice kids. And I do think you can tell a lot about a person by how their kids behave and act. Um, to me, it just, it just says a lot. So that's why I was willing to give teeny room. So the mama really wanted her to say, stay. So she could finish that fucking scene with WeTV and get whatever pennies from it she's hoping to get or has signed a contract for. Honestly, by being on this show, Teeny is still taking care of you and Rob because y'all all getting the income. Y'all all getting some kind of money because Teeny's the type that really keep her word. I know she's sending Rob his piece. His relationship with his mother is a red fucking flag, Teeny, though. She's doing more. You're doing more for him than his actual mother. That relationship is fucked up. Okay, and those kind of men... Are very dangerous because there's no way in the world he doesn't resent her when you talk about how all the times he quits talking to her and all that shit i'm telling you something ain't right she's mad that rob hasn't called since he had the blow up um since they had the blow up um between teeny and the mom so she said i went to cut off all the cameras and then he calls once all the cameras are off and he's basically chastising her about not having called the cable company to make sure the wi-fi is on so he can see everything who else is watching this live stream? You have two minor children who are either prepubescent going into puberty. This shit does not sit well with me. And he's a fucking controlling, you can already tell, has a uh, controlling abusive personality. I can see it coming. Okay? I can see it. So she could cut them off all this time from her phone. I said, girl, if you don't kick him off those cameras and never let him in your house, divorce him while you can. Because even if you get married, he's an ex-con. Trust me, the police will take your side. Don't let that motherfucker come in your house. And what the fuck is she staying at home? How is she staying at home? Don't tell me Rob is taking care of you and you putting money on his books. When he gets money from his brother and the business that they have. I, I can't. So Rob starts to tell us... Um, that he was in a seven-year relationship with a girl. He's had plenty of time for relationships. He'd been in jail since he was, what, 17, 18? And Teeny and him were talking in the midst of that relationship. And Teeny basically beat her out. He married her. It sounds like, to me, you and her got in fucking to it. And you decided to piss her off by marrying Teeny. And that's why Teeny kind of gets up in her shoulders when she hears about this woman's name. Y'all been married for five years, but how long were y'all dating before you decided to get married? Teeny, you lonely. And ain't no way in hell Rob is taking care of you providing a mortgage for that. What the fuck do you do, Teeny? And somebody wrote my comments, well, she must work from home or whatever. And I, and I agree. I just feel like if that, if that is the case, I want her to say what the fuck she works from home doing. Because right now you got the rest of us wondering how the fuck you a stay at home mom. And you ain't got no husband who's free. Okay. And now if you said you had a mobster husband, a drug kingpin husband, then I can understand. But get the fuck out of here. All right. So, um, she found out that his mother gets a weekly allowance from his mom that she didn't know about. She was like, I thought we talked about everything. Girl, you already know that ain't true. I just feel like teeny self-esteem is just low right now. And she just... Got tired of people saying she can't keep a man and the father's going. So she felt she just had to have somebody. A prisoner is not the move. Okay. So he has another bitch's picture 
on his arm as a tattoo and said she doesn't know anything about it and he's laughing about it he's like well i'll just probably deal with it when i get home or get it removed while i'm in here well motherfucker it's on tv now you dumb son of a bitch so he says that they told him the better decision <laughs> this is where i just i hate to laugh because i really think prison is the worst place in the world it is uh i don't think it's designed to reform people it's not really a correctional facility Everything is so fucking punitive. Everything's a punishment to the point where people can't correct their lives, right? Nevertheless, he said that if he got out on parole, he would still have to check in with a parole officer, take piss tests, and there was no point. So they just said he should stay in longer. I guess so when he got out, he wouldn't have to be on parole. I said, baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I really hate that. I'm laughing, but fuck it. I said, motherfucker he's lying okay he has more time or somebody gave him some dumb advice and he's even dumber for taking it or he's going to get out and be with that other chick and doesn't want her asking any questions in case it goes bad he can just say i got released from prison i had a friend drop me off at your house because who the fuck wouldn't take parole over prison i ain't never and I've known people that have gotten into trouble, okay? Who the fuck wouldn't take parole over prison? Get the fuck out of here. You's a lion. So I'm going to sit in here for two extra months. And she was like, I thought we'd talk about every Girl, bye. Okay, so she asked him exactly when is he coming home. And he was like, two months, 60 days. She was like, um, I said, first of all, if he's saying 60 days, I just want you to know, Tina, he's lying. It's probably longer than that. And I'm sure anybody can get in trouble in jail. Excuse me. Anybody can get in trouble while in jail and tack on time, especially a black person. It ain't hard for them to do that to you. But he's lying about some shit. Okay. And she's like, so that's like eight more times me and the kids have to go up there on the weekend. No, it's not. You don't have to go up there to see him and certainly not taking your fucking kids every weekend. To a man that is not their father. And even if it was their father, I can tell you right now, most men in jail would say they did they don't want their kids to see them like that on a regular basis. They don't. They're ashamed. And I do think that's how you know he don't give a fuck about your kids. And it's looking like you don't either right now. Or you're too worried about keeping a man who's in prison. He ain't gonna want to be kept when he get out. She's talking about how she already told her daughter she's expecting her at the birthday party. And I was like, that's why you shouldn't have your kids around this bastard like that. Anyway. All right, let's go to uh, <laughs> my next favorite. Um, <laughs> for all the wrong reasons, of course. True and Shantae. True is talking to the WeTV cameras about the cooking classes he's taking like four or five times a week. Now, I said to myself, I said, at least he's trying to do something with his time in jail. Meanwhile, I'm also trying to figure out how he got the whole fucking kitchen to himself for a Wii TV scene. What kind of jail is this he's in? Somebody please tell me because I need answers, but okay. So Shantae is a go-getter. I can give her that and I can tell. The problem is you are not going to be able to get far with dead weight like true. Okay? Um, she is a restaurant manager. She was like, well, I'm used to, you know manage other people's restaurants and i feel like we tv did that i'm trying i feel like we tv showed her with them fries to act like that ain't no real restaurant and that was fucked up y'all shouldn't have done that nevertheless we did see how she cooks at home and she can get down. So I'm not going to read her for that. And WeTV, fuck y'all for doing that. So she says she'll need about $100,000 loan from a bank to start the restaurant. Honestly, I thought that was kind of cheap. Uh, especially considering inflation. But whatever. So she goes to visit this African lady that's selling her house. She started the restaurant. And says that she understands what she's trying to do. She goes, but I wouldn't want any part of it. I said, hello and good morning. And she was like, make sure, you know, if y'all are getting married, half of it's yours. Because people come and go. The fact that this woman is like a, an advisor for a restaurant and can see this coming a mile, 10,000 miles ahead, Shantae, 
she's another one. Because let's be honest, a lot of these people are fucking cautionary tales of why we cannot be so... And I get it. I get it because I don't want to act like I'm being insensitive. Why you can't get so lonely or so worried about the judgment of quote unquote not being able to keep a man, not being able to get a man that you end up with pieces of shit like this just to say you have one. Because I really think that's the case with Teeny and Shantae. Because the fact that Shantae, um, because the next part was she was like, my goal was to open a restaurant, wasn't to open a restaurant until I had $25,000 saved. But she got scammed out of it. And had to start over. And that's, okay. Life happens. People get scammed. That, That does happen. But I think I really felt for her because I was like, she, first of all, could have been putting this money away, even if she was kind of struggling with it. If she wasn't paying two mortgages, trying to move down there with his sorry ass. And that woman told her the truth. She was like, it's going to be at least two years for profit. People have said that about restaurants and businesses anyway. And when they say turn a profit, they're not talking about before you start exchanging merchandise or selling things to people. They're talking about paying off the loan and that money's just yours. That kind of shit takes time. The restaurant business is rough. I mean, everybody likes to eat, but everybody, like, it's just, it's just one of those things. Um, and like I said, all these people, you can't be in that big of a hurry to be in a relationship that will have you looking back and saying, I was doing better before I met them and before I got caught up with them and people told me, but I couldn't see it. And Shantae, you got two kids to worry about. And the fact that you can even pull off two mortgages to get approved for a home loan twice while one is on the market says to me, regardless of what the fuck anybody thinks about what she does, she handles business. But you fucking it up. The fact that you got on WeTV to do this shit, you still pocket some money, but you might fuck it up, fucking around with True. We know you're going to eventually fuck it up, but I think you're going to fuck it up quick. So Shantae still talking crazy. And goes to see her stepbrother, Fred, who has been in jail, apparently on several occasions, but is also the one that introduced her to True. So she said he stole $5,000 out of her safe. She said she wants her money back from her stepbrother who stole it. She said the only person in the house was him and my two kids. I know he stole it. What the fuck kids gonna steal $5,000 out of a safe and do that they mama ain't gonna know about? Get the fuck out of here. And so he starts, this motherfucker starts lying. And I hate when a liar says, I don't know why I would do that to you. I knew you were saving that for your restaurant. Why would I do that to you? I don't know, motherfucker. You tell me why. Oh, because you knew I was saving it, so you knew it was there. And when he said he was dealing with addiction issues, I said, yeah, he took it. He t- he definitely took it. There's nothing else to talk about. And you lucky she didn't press on charges. See, Shantae, you got a good heart. But, girl, <clears throat> you got to love yourself a little bit harder. Excuse me. <coughs> All right. Um, so, but true, <coughs> excuse me, sir, you do not get to call Shantae's phone. Apparently you do because we saw it, but I'm just saying if this was me, you don't get to step to an ex-con while being a con about the money he stole, <laughs> okay, who you met in jail. Okay, motherfucker, you don't get to do that over the phone. Then Fred is talking about the money he has saved up for True um, when he gets out. I said, well, if you got it saved up, then give it to your sister. Tell me, this is your future brother-in-law. You was a lying bastard. So Fred, where the hell was Fred living? That Shantae walked through? I thought Shantae was ordering food. <laughs> I really did. Like, it was almost like she called him from the back. I was like, what the fuck is he doing? What? It looked like a doctor's office or like, I, I don't know. It was lots of things going on. <laughs> Anyway, um, Fred said that she really doesn't know what she's getting herself into by messing with True. Because they were in prison together, they were on the yard together, so he knows a lot. So she was like, well, what did you hook us up for then? And I was like, right? Even people in prison don't want to do you that dirty when if they're your family and care about you, right? So he said, because I wanted you to have a life, somebody to talk to. You wanted me to have somebody to talk to, someone who's bored in prison. And probably play girls like chess. I 
and you decide to tell her this when she's talking to you about money you stole, that's why she can't take your word for it. Now, yes, we can see it coming, but friend and true both ain't shit, so we just going to leave it there. Ayana and Jamal. Ayana, <laughs> you make for good TV for like the second half of a love and hip hop season, like four or five in New York or something. You would make good TV briefly, okay? But this bitch is going, excuse me, she's going to see, going to Lancaster, Pennsylvania to see her family. She's trying to make sure her son has school clothes, this, that, and the other, and that her kids will be taken care of. And I'm like, because I remember she said she had ki uh, two kids, but I kept seeing a little girl. So in my mind, I was like, okay, well, maybe he's with his father, but we all know how, un I'm sorry, I hate to mean, we know how unusual that is. Boy, never mind, I'm not going to start. But <laughs> I said, first of all, let me address this with Jamal and Ayana's dumb ass. Any fucking man who knows you strip for a living and is okay with that doesn't give a fuck about you. Not a real man. Not a man. A male may be okay with that, but a man is not. There is nothing to brag about. Then to know that Ayana strips and Jamal has her sending him money from selling her body. He's essentially pimping her from jail. We have yet to hear him discourage her from living that kind of life. I don't give a fuck if he worked at McDonald's. He doesn't respect you. I don't care how little he makes. A man who's okay with you selling your body for money ain't no good. And the shit is fucked up. And it's not cute. It's really not. So she doesn't know how long she's going to be in jail, but she's basically saying she's leaving money on his books for the time she's in jail. I said, bitch, worry about your damn kids and your own books. <coughs> Fuck him. You know he got other women sending him money. He probably got your best friend sending him money too. And she pissed off watching this show because he done told her they get married when he get out. Anyway, I'm glad that girl Lexi, she's... um friends with called her out she was like she in the car talking to this man like nothing is wrong like it's just normal when it's not and both y'all strippers and i'm not i'm not saying that people don't do what they have to do to make ends meet this is not an indictment on people because i know people get into just fucked up situations and just have to fucking figure it out and it's hard okay and, and lexi gives me that vibe Ayana gives me she could have gone to trade school and her mother would have done everything in her power to ensure that Ayana had what she needed to do it. And Ayana thought it was cute to go shake her ass because she was so desperate for attention from men and just got caught up in the lifestyle. Because her mama still look young and still has a very nice home and is taking care of her kid. I think her mother did the best she fucking could. Rob's mother, not so much. That's what I'm talking about. So... Meanwhile, she talking all this stuff and her two-year-old baby in the car. I don't give a fuck if a two-year-old don't completely understand. You a bad fucking example. And she w has the nerve to be rushing her friend Lexi, who has a license and can drive, who is clearly a good friend that's driving her two times DUI ass around, talking about hurry up because I got a busy video visit with him in like X amount of minutes. Bitch, you ain't paying no Uber driver. So Ayana's ghetto, sorry, trifling ass practically runs out the car to get on this video visit with Jamal. Why did you need to get to your mama's house to have a video visit on the phone? When it was still on the phone. It wasn't like you went and sat in front of your mama's laptop or some shit. You could have had this in the car. So she gets to her mother's house and her son comes running up to her who's like nine. And she says, oh, I haven't seen you in a long time. And clearly the mother is taking care of the son. Who's not living with Ayana. And when she shows up to see him, the bitch got the nerve to have a prisoner on the phone. Not his daddy or nothing else. Who isn't the daddy and talking to another man in prison. That's the last thing a young black boy needs to see. I'm sorry. And I'm. Call me whatever, call me conservative. I don't give a fuck. That's the last thing a boy. That wasn't his father. 
But you got time to talk to this motherfucker. And you're not raising your son. You put money on his books and then talk about, I don't know how I'm going to get school clothes. Stop sending that bastard money. So this is how to fuck your kids up 101. It really is. Because this is the kind of shit that little boys see and grow up resenting and hating their mother. And eventually, therefore, taking it out on every other woman that they meet in their life, particularly in romantic relationships because his mother did this kind of shit and i am in no way suggesting the father is equally responsible for not being around to teach that boy a better way and the grandmother is doing who don't look like a grandma but a grandmother's doing everything she knows how to do but at the end of the day that boy knows that he has a mother and she's doing other things and he has a two-year-old sister who is with her you think that's not gonna affect that boy and make him feel away the fuck out of here so then she starts telling us i'm just sitting up here thinking should a two-year-old be with a stripper as a mother with two duis and facing jail time i don't really believe in taking people's children away unless under extreme circumstances because anybody can i don't believe in that kind of oh they're poor so they can't afford it i don't believe in that shit okay I'm talking about, you know, abusing a kid, not feeding them, all that kind of, I mean, really, you know, I'm not talking about somebody who pops their kid because they, you know, discipline. I'm not even talking about that because I don't believe in that. But this shit is ridiculous. And she got cameras following her while she do it. That's how we know she's stupid. So the boy lives with his grandmother. She said, well, I had him at 17 and I had postpartum. And she said, we just got used to the situation. So he stays with her. Who's we? I'm sure your mother loves him because those are her grandkids and lucky for you she's still young and she's a different kind of grandma who will continue to take care of them because it's the right because she loves them but that's the situation you got comfortable with because you had time to fight your best friend in the street and your son don't even live with you bitch you got other priorities to worry about now I, do I think the boy's better off with his grandmother absolutely do I think he should have to be better off with his grandmother? Absolutely not. The mother honestly looked like her sister. I thought that was her sister hanging in there. Um, she looks amazing. So the chick is making her booty clap up in the bathroom. But it's Jamal motherfucker in jail. And calling herself, referring to herself as his forever hoe. His slut. Yeah, your son has no business near you. How do you end up in this situation where you are actively being a stripper on reality TV? And your mother may have been a single mother, but she raised you and your brother and is a homeowner. Who still, you can tell as she was talking, has to work full time to take care of herself and her grandson and can't miss days. If she does, that's money lost. Your mother works hard. Stick a pin there. We're getting back to this. So she starts asking him, what's he going to do if she's in jail? He was like, well, we about to be in the same situation. She's talking about being upset that he's going to be talking to other women. I said, bitch, of course he is. You are fucking your best friend's man. And don't, I refuse to fucking believe she was not fucking this man before he went to jail. Miss me with the bullshit. Ayana acts like the auntie or the, you know, the big cousin that the kids admire. Instead of the mother. She's about to go to jail. And she is still laying on her mama's couch. In them stripper like clothes. Them fashion over clothes. And still thinks the charge is stupid instead of her behavior. I don't know. I didn't even know you could get no DUI. You knew it the first time you got one. You. What the hell? And her mother was like. I want you to stop making stupid decisions. She was like, well, I'm not stupid. I know what I'm doing. She's like, no, you need to get your life together. It's one thing for you to make decisions that only affect you. But now it's affecting other people. And quite frankly, it's on your mother's lap. And that's wrong. She had the nerve to ask her mother. Brought that two-year-old girl there with her homegirl Lexi. And asked her to take care of her two-year-old daughter like it was nothing. And had the nerve to say to her mother, you should do this because you are my mother. See, that's how, and that's why I said, 
I know Ayana could have gone to trade school or something like that. Her mother would have done everything in her power. Because the bottom line is, your mother probably spoiled you. And I'm not even saying it's like a fault. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out how the fuck you are the way you are. Your mother tried to compensate for everything that your sorry ass daddy wasn't providing or doing for you. And your ungrateful grown ass got your nerve to bring home a second baby that your mama got taken care of for an infinite amount of time. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Ayana's the kind that her kid going to go without if she got to be with her man. And her mother told her, right, get your shit together. And she was like, I can't be there to pick up the piece of paper. She was like, you should be. I'm your mom. She said, that's what I got a man for. A man who's in jail? Girl, bye. Anyway, that's all I got for this. I hope y'all have a great weekend. I hope y'all had a good week. If you didn't, don't worry about it. It's over. If you got to work this weekend, just know I'm sending you good vibes. Um, I'll see y'all tomorrow for Love and Marriage Huntsville. I hope this is giving something. Because if not, I may just, just fall off. But nevertheless, um, have a good weekend. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.